I'm surprised the car is blown up yet. Let's get out. Let's see what happens. Oh! Hey there, 10 out of 10 here, where every game is a 10 out of 10, even if you aren't a mentally unstable police officer driven to madness after adapting to the collapse of society and its twisted replacement, a dark and savage reality in which gasoline and fast cars are the only solace in an otherwise desolate and barren wasteland. In other words, a very, very bad world. And today we're talking about a game I actually quite like, Mad Max. As far as source material goes, this game is a bit of an odd one. Obviously, its setting and general characters are from the original Mad Max movies with Mel Gibson, but it also has a lot of visuals and stylization for the much more recent Fury Road movie with Tom Hardy. And yes, believe it or not, this is actually a video game based on a movie that isn't hot garbage. You might assume that this is a basic movie tie-in game created just to ape on the cash flow of a popular franchise, but that doesn't seem to be the case. As far as I can tell, the fact that this game released in the same year as the Fury Road movie is most likely due to the producer, Warner Brothers, making it happen. But, enough about that. There are two main mechanics of this game, on foot fighting, and on vehicle fighting. If you ever played any of the Batman Arkham games, you already know exactly how the combat works. You punch, you dodge, and you counter. Each of these actions have their own button, and that's pretty much it. The on foot fighting might sound overly basic, but it's actually really engaging and visceral. There are just enough upgrades and enemy types to keep things interesting, and you really get the sense that Max is the kind of guy that would break all the bones in your body just because you accidentally scratched his car. On the other hand, the vehicle combat is a little bit more unique. You can see where parts of it were taken from other games like The Wheelman or Cross Out or Vigilante 8. But again, even if some aspects were taken from other games, everything feels unique and fits really well together in this game. Car combat boils down to ramming and shooting stuff with your big harpoon thingy and a couple of other weapon upgrades that you get throughout the game. You also have your Magnum Opus, a signature vehicle that you can customize and upgrade as you progress through the game. You can change all kinds of things like color, armor, guns, big spiky thingies, the list goes on. It's really cool having a vehicle that changes with you as you progress through the game. It starts off as a dirty old rust bucket that can't do much and ends up as a beefed up war machine that can take down enemy convoys in a matter of seconds. So yeah, as a whole, while the driving and fighting in this game isn't super original, I can at least say that it's definitely fun, which is good, because you're going to be doing a whole lot of it. I've already mentioned it, but yes, I did like this game and I think it's pretty dang cool. But despite having many explosions and a whole lot of cool guy action hero stuff, this game is a bit of a collect-a-thon. The campaign is great and has a lot of really interesting missions and set pieces that are worth experiencing, but other than that, there really isn't too much to it. There are races and upgrades to get, strongholds to take down, and various cars and other collectibles to get, but as a whole, a large part of the game is just getting stuff. And I don't think that's really a bad thing. There's plenty of side missions and things to do if you want to, but you also don't have to. You can get through the game by doing the bare minimum, and that's pretty good too. All I'm saying is the game is a decent length, but skipping all the side stuff might mean you don't get quite as much out of this game as you thought you might have. So my recommendation up to this point might not have been super clear, but yes, I do recommend Mad Max, and I think you should play it, as long as you know what you're getting into. You can't come into this game expecting a 100 hour long epic, which honestly, I think is a good thing. Playing this game is a lot like watching a classic action hero movie. You expect cool guys with big muscles, guns, explosions, and this game definitely gives you all of that in a nice little rage-wrapped package. True, its story tends to fall on the wayside a little bit, 
and parts of the game could be considered shallow or unoriginal, but, uh, I mean, it's got big explosions. What else do you need? Rule of cool aside, this game has one more aspect that I really feel makes it special. The visuals. It's pretty obvious that the people involved with making this game did a lot of work to create a world that feels like the theatrical Mad Max world. The characters are weird and deranged. In a good way. The environments are desolate yet breathtaking. In a good way. And the cars are a glorious, mismatched nightmare of junkyard scraps and MacGyver-esque improvised weaponry which is just... chef's kiss. My biggest complaint about this game is that it seems like the start of something amazing. Once you complete the campaign, there really isn't much to do. You can't replay missions, there's no challenge mode, there's not a whole lot to continue your playthrough. And there are many parts of this game that seem like they simply weren't fleshed out. There are whole sections of the game where you just go to for one mission, and you don't really get to explore everything that's there. I get the feeling that there was a lot of passion and good intentions in making this game, but it simply didn't have the time or money to complete it the way that they wanted to. But that's a discussion for another day. So in the end, Mad Max has some rough spots and gaps, but it's just too entertaining and downright purdy for me to say it's not worth giving a try. So if you ever dreamed of being a tough as nails, dog foo eating, death card driving, guzzling searching, definitely mentally unwell and morally questionable, yet we somehow still root for him in the end as the good guy, then this game just might be your new favorite game.